folks, this is the Green Swamp Nature Preserve. Um, it is owned by the Nature Conservancy, and we're here to look for Venus flytraps and any other pitcher plants that we may find. Um, but first, look right up here. This is a highbush blueberry, and we have been enjoying trail magic along the way this morning. <sighs> Bugs on that one. This is some good stuff, a good uh, welcome uh, breakfast snack. I don't grab it to fall into the swamp myself. But uh, anyway, let's go find some fly traps. reason I'm walking so carefully is because all around me here there's Venus flytraps growing all over the ground. There's one, there's one, there's one, they're all over. There's one. And there's one. <laughs> they're just everywhere. And if you're not careful you'll step on them. So we're here to check out not just the Venus flytrap, which we'll look at in a minute, but also pitcher plants, the other carnivorous plant most people don't think about. When you think of carnivorous plants, you usually think about the, the Venus flytrap and its snap trap. But there are so many more carnivorous plants that are so cool, and they all grow right here. Well, a lot of them. Right here in the 90-mile radius of Wilmington, North Carolina, that is where you're going to find the main habitat, the only habitat, of the Venus flytrap. So, let's check these guys out and then go over and look for some more. But first, got to get out of here. And hopefully not get trapped. Venus flytraps are a truly amazing plant. Unfortunately though, they live in soil that is very nutrient poor, so they have to have a way to acquire nutrients. And they have devised this unique way in that they trap insects. How an insect is trapped is quite simple. Once it walks into the trap, it, and it triggers at least two trigger hairs, the trap then snaps shut, the insect is sealed inside, and the plant then secretes several different digestive enzymes that digest the insect, but only the soft inner parts of the insect, not the insect's exoskeleton. After the insect is fully digested, which is about 5 to 12 days normally, the flytrap then reabsorbs the digestive fluids and reopens its trap and then the insect's exoskeleton is blown or washed away by the wind and rain. A trap can only close around seven times before it dies and a new one takes its place. If a trap is accidentally triggered by a stone or a nut or a curious person, it will reopen in about 12 hours. Now how does the plant actually move? That is the crazy thing. How does this happen? Well, despite all the efforts of countless scientists, we still don't know exactly how the Venus flytrap moves. But we do have some ideas. When two or more trigger hairs are triggered by an insect, an electrical impulse follows. It is sent to the area of the midrib, the hinge of the trap. Then things happen so fast that we can't really follow. A growth hormone builds up in the midrib. Hydrogen ions then move into the midrib. Calcium pectate is dissolved and the cells in some areas weaken and then the cells absorb more water more quickly. In other words, they grow. All these processes work together to create the mechanism which closes the trap. And in a split second, the plant gets a feed. Very cool adaptation for survival, don't you think? The Venus flytrap. We also discovered some sundew plants growing in amongst the grasses and fly traps. The sundew is a remarkable plant in that it, instead of using a snap trap, it uses little sticky hairs to, that it folds over and across its prey. Then the leaf will fold up and it will slowly digest the insect, thus getting a feed like the Venus fly trap. Later we discovered a single grass pink blooming beside the trail. Grass pink is an absolutely beautiful member of the orchid family.
check this out. This is a pitcher plant. A very amazing carnivorous plant in that these plants eat insects. Kind of like the uh, Venus flytraps that we were looking at earlier, but not. Venus flytraps are active traps. They snap shut when they're triggered, but the pitcher plant does not. It just sits and it waits. And it creates a nectar around the lip of the plant here, or around the lip of the modified leaf, and <clears throat> the insects are attracted by that nectar, and then they, once they step on this leaf, it's very waxy and slick, and they fall down inside, Whoop! and they land in this liquid that has digestive enzymes in it, and then the liquid slowly digests the insect over a period of a thousand years. Oh wait, no, that was the almighty sarlacc, um, totally different uh, planet. Anyway, so the insect falls down into the uh, the juices that the plant secretes and digests, and then that feeds the plant because these plants grow in very weak soils. These soils are not very nutrient rich. So the plant had to develop this way of feeding itself. And its way of feeding itself is being a carnivorous plant, which is just absolutely awesome. These are the flower stalks of the pitcher plant. Now these are, have already bloomed and they're working on producing seed right now. This protective covering here, or peristome, is protecting the plant from getting too much rainwater inside of it, which would dilute the um, enzymes and, and the liquid that it uses to digest its food. Now, I'm going to open this up and let the cameraman look down inside, being very careful not to damage the plant. And down there you may see some of its previous meals. And the plant will use all of the uh, nutrients that the insect possesses in its body and then the carcass will just stay down in the plant until the end of the season at, at which time the plant dies and everything falls to the ground. Of course now these plants are very fire dependent. In the spring there might be a thunderstorm and it'll, a big bolt of lightning will crash down. When this is all dry, light it up, burn it over really quick, burn off all the dead tops of the plants at the same time sweetening the soil and then after all the grasses have burnt and the dead tops have burnt, the plants send up their new shoots. And there's a new shoot right over there, so let's check it out. Now this one, uh, it's fairly new. You can see that it has not opened yet. The pitcher is still closed. And when it's ready, it'll pop open and form into a nice ready-to-feed pitcher just like this. So here's an old pitcher that was just laying here. I'm going to crack it open. Let's see what's inside of it. Check that out. All those little shiny black things are parts of insects that got digested by this plant. Very cool. Oh wow, here's more. Lots more. Oh, there's a ladybug of some type. Whoop. Lots of bugs. So you can see how effective these plants are at digesting insects. And so you can see how it would be nice if you had a lot of pitcher plants growing around your place if you had bugs. Well, if you had a lot of pitcher plants, you wouldn't have a lot of bugs. You wouldn't have to spray toxic chemicals all over the place to kill your bugs. You wouldn't have to poison the environment. So, pitcher plants, really cool plant. Look around here, though. They're everywhere. There's one there, there's one there, there's one over there. Way over there, there's another one. I gotta check that one out, it's huge. 